Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today we have a completely brand new topic. It's going to revolve around working over time and how it is actually the biggest choice you can make in your 20s. But I will even say, even if you didn't do that in your 20s, even later down the line or even your teen years. Now, why the hell do we even bring this topic up? Working over time, you should think of it even as both in terms of business and fitness, both. And what that basically entails is that when you get back to your house or home, you would choose deliberately to not do activities that basically you spend your time off on. So for example, watching movies, uh, being on socials and similar activities, but you would choose to actually learn about gym get additional work, do the job you need, need to do and to stop procrastinating at the same time. Now, the biggest thing I will have to break it down to is that it builds up your consistency and consistency is the king of it all. You have to figure out that and you have to also learn while doing that is that no matter if you have shit days, if you feel really good, if you feel motivated, if you how you feel you must have the consistency be that work in your life you know to continue working on those topics and this is why it's super important that especially working over time on any of the topics you want to work on is the way to build up that uh, muscle in your head now what is the exact opposite of this uh what you have to figure out is that if you have your usual uh, nine to five job or you have, for example, still uni or you even manage to have your own business, if you get to the point where you work for a couple of hours a day and then you get uh, some time off, what you tend to do is really what dictates uh, your entire life. What I mean by this is that if you are able to trade your time for learning, for working and for diving deeper into the topics you care about, the more that cascades uh, into, into the future. And this is why consistency is the biggest key you need to figure out is quite a bit helpful to you over the long run uh, in this one, especially. Now, I also written down is that what this helps you with is also with the hormone dopamine. We've talked about this so many times already in many of our videos before. And just to point out that dopamine is the motivation chemical. It isn't a pleasure hormone, but it's a basically a motivation hormone. You can think of it that way. If you don't really have it, you will feel shit and you will not feel like doing uh, many of the things you could be usually doing, like for example, work, cleaning up your room, or just basically taking care of the basic necessities in your life. If you have it um, high on the other hand, and you've basically reprogrammed your own brain, to actually enjoy doing the work, uh, you will make you will find it much easier to actually work and dive deep into topics you actually care about. Now, the more you do a particular activity, the more it gets uh, sort of intel into your own head. Is that the more your brain adjusts to actually enjoy the particular activity? What the hell am I talking about? If you, for example, start your fitness journey uh, for the first time, the first couple of sessions in the gym or even at home or even calisthenics will feel pretty shit uh, before you start doing them and also probably while you are doing them. Uh, and there was, might be one, some of the worst sessions you will ever have. But then what people tend to report uh, when they are consistent to their routines is that they tend to uh, have much higher enjoyment uh, out of gym. And when they then think about the first sessions they've had, they can't even figure out why they why they didn't uh, why they didn't want to do it much earlier as an example. So. This isn't anything that happens randomly. We now know that the brain is able to change its own state um, through the neurons, which can change quite a bit based on your own experience. And it does that quite fast. It doesn't take years to do that. Uh, and you are able to basically change, let's say, your setup inside your head to actually enjoy, for example, working out or working overtime even more. So. When you when you are actually thinking about uh, having a second job or having your own business alongside your nine to five or having your third work, what you have to realize is that it won't take away the enjoyment out of your life. If you do it consistently, you will start really enjoying the work you put in. And what is the added benefit of that is that if you do enjoy it, you will not spend your time on 
on the activities that literally do not give you any um, any benefits in your life, such as socials, video games, um, marijuana, porn, anything from that. And you will have higher um, satisfaction from your life and you will be even earning most likely higher income. You'll be working on yourself uh, with the same basis that you actually do enjoy those activities over time. So this is why over time uh, in any kind of endeavors of fitness or or business is so crucial because it primes you to focus on the right activities that you should be doing instead of what we have available nowadays to all of us. What you might have picked up on this is also my kind of the third point is that this allows you to not focus on the shit habits uh, that would otherwise kind of drive you away from work. Well, this basically means that if you really spend too much time on socials, on games, you will automatically uh, adjust your state to not enjoy the actual work in terms of the businesses or fitness sense uh, that you that you can do. One of the examples of this is that there are many successful fitness transformations. I mean, you can look them up on YouTube uh, of even young guys uh, in their early 20s or even in late teens. And the common denominator is that they used to all of times play games. They had some kind of, a, let's say, breakup or anything similar. And after stopping doing that, which games literally drive your dopamine um, as high as it can, after stopping that, they had enough dopamine to then actually want to work on themselves. So they were able to transfer this universal currency, which we call it, uh, to actually um, want to work on themselves. And they feel that and able to build amazing physics. Usually, uh, that's the most common denominator you can use, and this is just one of the many examples uh, of how the whole system can actually work. So this is why not just like working over time, but also not doing the other shit habits is especially helpful for you. So you are able to focus on what matters. Now, how much does it actually help you? I've done it uh, myself, but there are many studies as well. If you are able to get the guy from the same examples who didn't really want to work out after quitting video games to achieve some of the best physics we've uh, we could have had even in our early 20s ourselves, I think that's a huge testament that you can basically turn around your entire life for the better if you actually start basically working on the correct uh, topics. If you change your mindset to work for example, two to three jobs at the same time. Um, it really allows you to get mastery at that. And what this is entailing is the part about learning. And let's just face it, if you are the guy who was able to work two or three jobs, in best case, in the same industry, and you were able to learn so much stuff like your income, respect from others just goes up uh, automatically in that sense. You are worth more, you have been through the shit, you have been through the tribulations you that most people usually go through anyway, but you are able to do much more work in the, let's say, smaller amount of time frame. So even your learning quite a bit peaks when you only think about, for example, your work, maybe fitness and some couple of activities. If you use, for example, if you regularly use social such as Twitter, which can be uh, very, uh, let's say some aggressiveness definitely happening over there. Well, you can, uh, definitely spend too much time thinking about the stuff that doesn't really matter. Like replying to a person you may never meet again, uh, just because it, just because your brain basically tells it that you have to reply to someone on Twitter because they tweeted at you. So this is why it's quite a bit uh, dangerous to spend too much time on those pl platforms because they don't necessarily provide any any uh, real benefits to you. You aren't gonna get, you aren't gonna get uh, double the income by replying to someone on t Twitter, for example. I mean, that's on, never, never happened. So this is why it's really important to actually figure out is that if you are able to ditch those activities in order for actually focusing on work, on your fitness and on learning, both of those activities in whatever industry your work is in, you will be doing much better, man. I mean, it's absolutely huge and even if you would estimate, uh, which was my estimation before, is that you might not be able to work so much. Actually, like the beautiful thing about the brain is that it changes and you will start to enjoy your work so much more than ever be before.
I will mention one thing. Um, obviously, this isn't an advice to now quit everything and start working two to three jobs, but it's basically a way to show how working overtime is very um, actually easy to do. It's not even hard. You just have to get into it and you will realize that it's much easier than what you expected to. There is one phenomenon I will have to mention is the burnout effect. And many people had that when they focused heavily on the business side, uh, they could have had like nine to five job and the business and they just burned out. I will again mention the hormone dopamine because this is one hormone which is the most responsible for this. And the way burnout happens is that when you usually do your work uh, like nine to five in your business, you might not necessarily see the results immediately. What I mean by that is that you might even work on your business for six months, for three months, and you might not even get a first sale. For example, you might not even have a first client. You might just be setting up everything, then you launch it and you might not see anything uh, happen. Same with the nine to five job. You might be busting your ass off in the, in the work and uh, you might be expecting a uh, let's say a pay increase, but then may uh, not come, uh, which usually in those cases, uh, you might be disappointed because you've put in a lot of work for a business and you don't see any any results. And then you might think that it might not have been even useful to work that much, which is when dopamine quite heavily crashes in those states. But you might even have some days, even without those two scenarios where you just feel like shit and you don't know what to do and you feel like working on the business and on your work is pretty much mean, meaningless, which again entails to the, to the hormone dopamine. Now, how can we actually increase it? So, I mean, basically we will always have those days. Everyone has them. Everyone who who is a celebrity, who has made it, who hasn't made it has shit days, but you can make your life easier by knowing about them and knowing about how to deal with them. They will always be there, but just remember this. If you have shit days, what you would like to do is to increase your dopamine back. Now, there are many ways to do that. I don't recommend the stuff such as socials. Uh, the use of the newsfeed particular function is pretty much the biggest issue on those uh, pl platforms, especially also the notifications part, because they raise your dopamine in a very steep way. What is the best case is to raise your dopamine in a gradual way. And there are some activities which will do that. And we've discussed them already in the previous videos, which are one. Cold showers, gym, also silent exposure. Those are pretty much the huge activities you would like to be doing. Also work will increase the dopamine, but now we are talking about the burnout. And also music is really Im important. Now, what I want to point out is that if you feel shit, you might not be able to work out for the entire day. You might not be able to take cold showers for the entire day. That would just be a waste of time uh, to do, do that if you wanted to focus on, on work. But what you can do is, especially with music, if you actually are, if you actually pick uh, the music that you especially enjoy, that will raise your dopamine gradually over the course of the day, and it's the biggest tool you can use uh, to prevent your uh, burnouts. It's um, the biggest tool and probably not really known about, but music will definitely help you to keep focusing on your work. And after those bad days end, after uh, you then get back to your, your usual self when you actually want to work a lot. You will just basically laugh at the days when you were doing pretty badly and how actually that was much more easy than you expected with the with using music or, for example, other um, other activities as mentioned, for example, cold showers as well. But music is definitely the most universal because you can use that in any scenario that you would uh, that you you would have liked. Now. I think pretty much uh, what you just have to remember is that consistency is the biggest thing from the start. You have to realize that the dopamine is as well a huge thing uh, that entails both ability to work overtime and to also want to work overtime because you can either you can either focus your attention on stuff that matters or stuff that doesn't, which we just entail what that, what that uh, kind of is. And I think it's the biggest choice you can actually make in your 20s because that cascades uh, into like that part of life. If you are able to start as soon as possible in your fitness, you will automatically learn more and more about it. And you can also uh, then teach others about it. So that's the biggest thing you can actually learn. So hopefully this video was thankful, uh, helpful. On the other hand, I am really thankful for, watch, for you watching this. Thank you.